finally, C and Rust can peacefully coexist. If you don't believe me, stick around to the end of this video to find out. In this video, we take a Raspberry Pi Pico and write code in both C and Rust that compile down and run on the embedded ARM Cortex M0 processor. Okay, so to make this project that runs both C and Rust on a Raspberry Pi Pico, we'll have to do a few things. First, like in any other video I've done where we use the Raspberry Pi Pico, we have to git clone the Raspberry Pi Pico SDK. I'll show you here where that comes from. It's just a set of libraries and code that Raspberry Pi wrote that allows you to interface with the Raspberry Pi Pico using kind of a hardware abstraction layer. So go ahead and clone that. I've already got it, so I'm not going to do that right in front of you guys. Um, next, you're going to clone this project here. It's actually the code that I've written to prepare for this video. You can download this and follow along with me if you're interested in doing so. Uh, that code, if you open it, looks like this here on the right. It uses the Raspberry Pi Pico API to essentially turn on the default pin and doing it all in C, right? So if we do cmake dot and we do make, it'll build the binary into the UF2 file that we can put onto the Raspberry Pi Pico. And I'll show you here that mine currently is blinking as this code intends it to. So this isn't important, right? This isn't cool. We don't care about this. We want to we want to write Rust and make them work together, the C and the Rust. So Step one to do that will be we'll make a new cargo file or a new crate and we'll call it Rusty. So Rusty is going to be the location where we compile our Rust library that we then incorporate into our C program and then use that library to do things in Rust and jump between Rust and C. So to do this properly, we need to edit this cargo file, right? So this cargo file gets generated like this by default. Nothing really important here. Basically, say the package name is Rusty. We have our initial version and that we made it in 2021. It's actually wrong, but you know, not a big deal. Um, we need to do a few things to enable this cargo package to be compiled as a static library. A static library and a dynamic library are different, and we have to do static for an important reason that I'll tell you later in the video. To make it a library, we'll do this lib mark here. This tells the package, hey, this package produces a library. Uh, the library name for us will just be the same. It'll be Rusty. And it's going to be the crate type of a static library, a static lib. The static lib here tells the compiler and the linker to produce a .a file, an archive file, as opposed to a .so file. So once we have that, now we got to actually write the code that we want to happen in Rust. So by default, Rust will create this source folder for you here. Uh, we're going to actually remove the main.rs because this will get compiled into a full Rust executable. And instead, we're going to write a lib.rs because we are a library. The entry point for this library will start at lib.rs. Uh, to begin, we are going to write an embedded program. So we're going to type no standard to make sure that Rust does not try to compile in the Rust standard library into our library and make it this huge, you know, blob of code that we don't really need, right? Um, next, because we are going to end up be coding in a embedded environment, we need to incorporate a panic handler. So we need to use the panic info type and declare our custom panic handler. When we're embedded, we need to tell the compiler, hey, if something goes wrong, what do I do? And we do that with this notation here, panic handler. And we'll make a, a function called panic with a K for the lulls uh, that takes a panic info as input and it's of type panic info reference. And it returns nothing and actually doesn't return at all. And then what it will do is it'll just loop infinitely. We will really not handle the panic. If the board panics, we're just going to have to kind of deal with it and figure it out ourselves. Don't worry about this too much. The important code here is where the code for, you know, that we write in Rust actually begins. We need to be able to export this code to the C interface and allow C to link with it. And the way we do that is we say first pound no mangle. This basically guarantees that the function uh, declaration that we come up with is exposed to C in a way that it can understand, right? And we're gonna say there is a public external C type function we're going to call it set and sleep, and we'll talk about that why in a minute. Uh, it takes a pin, which is an I32, and an on off value, which is a bool, and it yields an I32. Let's zoom out a little bit. An I32. And for right now, it's just going to return one. That's all. So basically, this is a function that C can link with, and it will return one here. No, no really craziness going on there. 
So now that we have this code written that exposes a set and sleep function that C can link with, we need to build this library to actually try to link it into our project, right? To do this, we do cargo build that builds a project. We want to set it to release mode to strip out all the unnecessary bloat code and, and debug code that comes by default with the Rust crate. And then also we want to set the target to be this here. It's the thumb architecture for ARM, ARM v6 no underlying OS ABI and the extended ABI for the ARM Cortex M0. So we'll do this. There are some, uh, you know, things that the compiler is concerned about. One of them being that we don't use any of the function parameters that we set, but that's not a big deal. If we go into the target thumb non ABI folder and then into release, you'll see we've created this lib rusty here. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to copy this path and use that to eventually link up the rest of our project with this library here. So we'll go into our CMake file and there's a bunch of code here that tells CMake essentially how to build our make file to build our project. We want to add lib rusty a into this target link library. So it tells the compiler, Hey, when you're looking for code, also look at this additional archive library. What we need to do is add the CMake source path here, CMake source dir, and then add the path to our, our library here. So it's CMake source dir, which is the current directory here, RB2040 blink. And then we will do slash rusty target thumb mode, blah, 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 all the way to incorporate our library. So we'll finish up and include that with CMake dot and run make to confirm that it actually makes it. Okay, so we haven't actually incorporated any code here. What we're able to do now though, is go into our blink.c and actually use this function that we've created in Rust. So we'll go ahead and copy that out and we're gonna create a prototype in our C file to know where to link against. We're gonna do, uh, it actually returns an int. So int set and sleep takes int x and int y. We don't really care about the parameters right now. And we could say that int x equals set set and sleep one, two, right? This doesn't actually do anything. We're just proving a point that we can copy or that we can write this code in Rust, expose it externally to C, return a value, and then call that function in a C file that runs embedded, right? So we'll see make dot again to confirm that our whole build chain gets recreated and then we'll type make. Cool. So we can actually see that our, our program got built here, this uh, blink.elf, and we can actually go in with object dump and look at the file, and then we're gonna search with slash for set and sleep, just to confirm that in the main function, set and sleep does get called. So this is pretty cool, right? Our main function written in C links up against a Rust function and then uses that Rust function to do something in Rust, whatever we want to do right now, it just returns one, and then eventually goes back and continues the rest of the execution. So you may be thinking this code is pretty dumb. It just returns the number one from Rust. Who cares? And you're actually right. This code to be important needs to make use of the Raspberry Pi Pico SDK's exposed C APIs. There is one problem with Raspberry Pi Pico's SDK in that the API calls are actually inline. So they are included at the source level. And because of that, we can't use them as an externally linked function in, in Rust. So what we need to do is actually create a jumper function, a function that allows us to jump into these inline functions here in our C programs so that Rust can access them. We're going to call it a void function. It's going to be called GPIO put explicit. What it'll do is it'll take an int pin number and a bool on or off, and it's just going to call GPIO put on pin and on off and then return. The reason we're doing this is we need to create a symbol that is not inline that Rust can actually access to make use of the C code. Without this here, it actually has no idea where GPIO put lives. So now that we have GPIO put exposed through our explicit function declaration and sleep MS already exposed publicly because that's a real function and not an inline, what we can do is we can edit our Rust to expose these functions in Rust using the extern calls. So extern here basically tells the linker, hey, I'm about to say some function names that we're not gonna write ourselves. They're going to come from what's called a foreign function interface. The foreign function interface here for these will be first the function GPIO put explicit, which will take a pin value of I32 and an on off of bool. And it will return again, it's actually a void, but for now we're just gonna lie and say it takes an I32. And then also we'll expose a function sleep ms, which takes a time 
as an I32. And again, null, but returns an I32. We're going to lie to the compiler. And then we're going to edit our set and sleep uh, prototype here to also take a time as an I32 as well. We're going to write set and sleep to do what it says. We're going to call our GPIO put explicit. And again, this is an unsafe call because it's a C function. We're going to call our GPIO put explicit, which lives over here in C land with the parameters pin and on off. And then we're going to call sleep MS with the provided time. And then at the end here, we'll return one. The idea here is we're just proving the point that we can use an exposed C API inside of Rust, do some Rust logic, and then return back to a C function here. And what we'll do is we'll actually use this to completely replace the logic of our program. So instead of GPIO put LED pin one and sleep, we can just do set and sleep LED pin one, and it will sleep for a thousand milliseconds. And then we'll set and sleep LED pin zero, a thousand milliseconds. We need to edit our prototype here and we'll make it actually correct. We'll say int pin in, or bool on off and then int time. And then there we go. So what will actually happen here is we will run C. We will go through this loop. We will do set and sleep, which will actually be a far jump into our Rust library. The Rust library will use the exposed GPIO put explicit, which lives over here in C and then call sleep and then return one. So what we have to do to get this to work is first go into our Rusty library and cargo build should be no issues there. Awesome. We'll go back and we'll type make, we'll full build, no dependency issues, nice and, and clean. And then finally, we need to actually copy the library onto our Raspberry Pi Pico. So do that real quick and we'll copy it right here. Okay, and as you can see, we now have our Raspberry Pi Pico sitting there and blinking at the interval that we specified in our C file, but making use of that in a Rust file. Guys, I hope you learned something. I hope you learned that, you know, C and Rust actually do play together pretty well. You got to kind of trick the tool chains to work together. But once you figure that out, it's actually not that much work to make a C function call Rust or a Rust function call C or vice versa. Um, if you enjoyed this video, you learned something, or you dislike me, do me a favor, hit like, hit subscribe, check out my merch store, link in the description below, and I'll see you guys next week. Take care.